Hello everybody! In this video, I would like to create an effect that transforms a scene into its pixelated version. We've seen that before, right? But this time, we won't settle for ordinary square objects. We'll tilt them a bit to create a diagonal grid with an adjustable size. Let's take a look at how such an algorithm works. Just like in the previous video, we'll start by creating a scene with an image in the background, which we'll then apply our computation to. So I'm right clicking on the scene, create new scene, let's call it, tilt it for example, okay. And this is our image, I'll drag it to the scene so the uh, sprite to the uh, node was automatically created and in the inspector let's cancel centered in the offset and in the transform let's reset to zero zero. Okay, and uh, scroll down to the material section, let's create a new shader material, click it and create a new shader, which is called tilted.gd shader of the canvas item type, and as always I'll put it to the shaders folder, and create, and click again to open it in the editor, let's just expand that a little bit, and as always, uh, we'll remove everything that Godot added to the generated code, but that we won't need, so I'm deleting the vertex function and the light function. Okay, so we'll start by adding uniform parameters. Since we want to create a grid, we need to set the size of its cells, the color of the lines between them and the thickness of these lines. So three parameters in total. Uniform float uh, squares, uh, square size, uh, sorry, square size with uh, in range, and the initial value, for example, 8. And the range would be from 1 to, uh, I don't know, 64. That should be enough for the grid. And the step is, of course, 1, as we don't want any fractional cells. All right, that's the first one. Now the grid color. Uniform, that would be vector 3 for the IG RGB color. Grid color with a hint, uh, so scroll for the for the uh, color picker in the inspector and let's start at zero which is the black color and finally uh, the grid thickness uniform float uh, grid thickness again with some hint range and let's put it to 0.2 for example as a start value and make it from 0.1 to i don't know two and the step point zero one uh, sorry, <laughs> zero one. Okay, and we can start working on the fragment function. This time, we are not creating a symmetrical pattern, so there is no need to shift the origin to the center. However, since we want to display tilted squares regardless of the image dimensions, we'll need to recalculate the aspect ratio. Okay, let's do it here. So first the vec2 UV is simply UV, no uh, origin shift. And now the resolution vec2 resolution we can take uh, easily from the texture pixel size variable. And recalculation, uh, sorry, UVX is multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution y all right as we know uv coordinates are in the range of 0 to 1 so if we want to work with an adjustable grid cell size a small transformation of this range will come in handy we could solve this by using the frag chord variable or since it's simpler in this case we can simply multiply the uv by the smaller value of the resolution vector specifically resolution y okay so let's do it here and uv is simply multiplied by resolution y very well what's next we'll need the coordinates of the current grid cell which we can easily obtain with this calculation, taking the square size parameter into account. Back to 
grid UV uh, is floor of UV divided by a uh, square size. Okay? Thanks to the floor function, which returns the nearest smallest integer for a given argument, the grid UV variable holds the same value for the entire length of the square size. Now we can get the color of this cell by transforming grid UV back to the 0 to 1 range, which the texture function works with. So VEC3 color is the result of the texture function applied on the current texture, the background image, and grid UV. Uh, sorry, <laughs> grid UV, which we need to multiply by the square size and divide by the resolution to get back to 0, 1 range. And since this is a vector 4, we just take RGB components to transform that to vector 3. And we can finally display the result. So color is vector 4 uh, of this color and 1 for the alpha value. Wait for it. Okay, let me just enhance that a little bit. If we wanted a simple pixelation effect for this image, we would basically be done. We can see how the pixel size changes according to the square size parameter. So I find it in the inspector shader parameters. And if I change square size, we can see how it's bigger or smaller or just one. Okay, let's revert to the original value. All right, but we want a tilted grid, right? That's a bit more complicated, but not excessively. We'll need to work with the fact that such a tilted square is divided into four triangles, which we'll then process individually. We'll start by splitting grid UV, grid UV, here it is, uh, splitting it uh, into two parts and then further split those into two more based on which part of the grid we are in. Basically, if we have, for example, this uh, matrix of four squares, we will just create this uh, diagonal lines to uh, form the tilted square out of these four squares. Okay, so let's get back to the code and we will add this uh, vec2. Let's call it cell one. There will be two of them. Is grid UV, eh, grid UV plus vec two zero zero. I will get to this shortly. Why I'm doing that. And similarly, vec two cell two is again grid UV increased by vec two. One and one. Uh, okay, I think it's clear that adding the zero vector in the first line has no effect. I just included it for clarity to show which quadrant of the divided tilted square we are working with. As I said, in this matrix of four uh, squares, we now uh, calculate the first one. 0, 0, and the last one, 1, 1. And now, if we are in the certain position on the grid, we will change them to the second one and third one, like this. So, if modulo grid uv dot x and modulo by 2 is not equal to modulo grid uv dot y and again by 2 eh, 2 then let's redefine cell 1 and cell 2 so cell 1 is grid uv plus vector 2 and this time 0 and 1 and cell 2 eh, cell 2 is grid uv plus vec2 1 and 0. All right, and we can see that Godot is warning us. Uh, not yet, sorry, something wrong here. Here, vec2, of course. 
we can see that Godot is warning us about something like this. If I click that, there are several warnings, but two of them are related to unused uniform parameters, grid color and grid thickness. We are concerned with the third one, which involves comparing the results of the modulo functions. Because it's possible that when working with floating point numbers, there could be inaccuracies and the equality might not hold. So we'll change the condition according to Goro's suggestion, which is use the absolute value of the difference is less than uh, 0 0.0001. Let's do it. Ah, not this. This. And where was that? Here. So instead of that, we will use absolute value and put it to the square and absolute value of the difference and we want that to be less than 0 0.0001 okay this is correct and the warning is gone now we'll get the color of the pixel for each of these cells we'll do it the same way as before but instead of grid uv we'll work with cell 1 and cell 2 so it would be like this i will just copy this line and call it color 1 and this time we are not working with grid uv but this cell 1 let's copy and paste and i'll do the same for color 2 so color 2 and cell 2 times square size divided by the resolution okay but which of these colors should we use we'll simply find out which cell the current pixel is closer to and that will be the one we use so first we'll calculate both distances uh, fold this one is the function length of the argument uv divided by square size and minus cell one the first distance and the second one let's just copy and paste change it to this two and use cell two all right and now we can assign the resulting color if the first distance is smaller than the second one it will be color one otherwise it will be color two so here we can use uh, the ternary operation operator this one is less than this two then it is color one otherwise color two wait for it and we have the result let's just show it better right here isn't that beautiful once again we can verify uh, by changing the square size parameter in the inspector to ensure that um, the resulting effect matches our expectations. So I will just increase the square size or decrease it. That's too much, but I guess you get the picture. Great. However, we are still missing the grid itself. So the parameters of which we also define in the inspector, like grid color and grid thickness. We can achieve straight lines between the cells most effectively using the smooth step function. And here's how we do it. So right here we can continue and it would be float <coughs> grid line. Let's call it grid line uh, is, as I said, a smooth step function. And the edges would be negative grid thickness, positive grid thickness, and the value is the difference of distances, this one minus this two. Okay. And we will mix this value into the resulting color. So here we adjust the color by assigning the result of the mix function of the original color the grid color and the grid line weight factor okay eh, no this okay it seems something is not quite right you might remember from the tutorial on creating digital numbers that if we wanted tilted shapes we need to work with the absolute value of the difference so we'll improve grid line this way put it here and improve that grid line eh, 
grid line is multiplied by absolute value of uh, <laughs> grid line minus one. Let's try this. Okay, there we go. The grid is fixed. However, it's not very prominent, especially if I zoom out, we barely see it. So let's try to sharpen it a bit. We could simply multiply the result by a constant, but it might be more flexible to control its sharpness with another uniform parameter. Um, let's add it first. Uniform float. Great. Sharpness. Let's give it the int range and the initial value, for example, 10, and make it from 1 to 20, I guess it would be, <laughs> sorry, 20, here we go, and the step again, point zero 0.01, okay, scroll down and let's use it in the code, so we'll simply multiply by grid sharpness, wait for it, perfect, now we are done, we can take a look at the final effect and try adjusting the parameters, so, where is it? Let's increase the sharpness or decrease it and increase the thickness. This is a good uh, fade out effect or fade in, I would say. And again, uh, of course, there is a great color. We didn't work with that yet. So let's put it to a green color. Yeah, basically, you can set any color you want here. OK, one last thing. If we wanted to work with rhombuses instead of tilted squares, we could achieve uh, that by simply changing the square size parameter from float to vector2, like this. So I will comment out this line and write it again with the vector2 uh, parameter type. Uniform vector2 square size uh, is, initial value would be vector2, I think, 8 we had. Okay, uh, for some reason, Godot's get confused if we change the type of uniform parameter, like name is the same, but the uh, type was changed from float to vec2. So if, like me, you are seeing just a black screen, simply change the value in the inspector and it should be fine. So let's just move it a little bit, okay, and revert back. Uh, by the way, is it rhombuses or rhombi for the pl plural? I'm not sure. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. Now, if I increase the value of y, I get a elongated rhombus like this. Can you see it? Or we can do uh, the same with x. Yeah, it's pretty cool. OK, let's get back. Thank you so much for watching. And I think such an effect could be useful in many games. For example, if we want to create a scene transition, we can first activate this grid and then gradually increase the value of the grid thickness parameter until the entire screen is black. And then, by doing the opposite, bring in the next scene. There are certainly plenty of possibilities and this shader can be very useful. Anyway, thanks again for watching and for every like or subscribe. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.